is it just you're using that law firm light? It's not law firm light. It's a completely different model. I want to sort of have such a wider, deeper network. If you are going to question quality, you can't question, therefore, the quality of the, the, the law firm. The market has changed. What would you say to a organization that, that was worried about that? Flexibility comes at a cost, but actually, when you do the final analysis... Welcome to the General Counseling Podcast. This week, we're covering the alternative legal services market. Uh, over the last three or four years, flexible resourcing and the provision of alternative legal services has been a major priority for a number of Montresor's clients. And I'm delighted today to be joined uh, by two people from Condor, which is the law firm Phil Fisher's captive alternative legal services offering. Um, that is Stephen Engel, who is the head of the Condor business line, um, and James Lawrence, who joined earlier this year as head of client engagement. Welcome to the podcast, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tom. Stephen, do you want to um, give us Condor in 20 seconds? Sure. Uh, so Condor, as you say, is Field Fisher's captive ALS provider, uh, providing solutions to all of Field Fisher's uh, clients across various different practices. I think we currently cover all of the practices areas um, across the business. Uh, ostensibly, we provide interim resourcing to clients, uh, secondments, uh, etc., filling in uh, resourcings where needed. We provide outsourcing, uh, and we provide technology solutions to clients. Um, we're currently working with clients on a range of, of, of uh, engagements, including regulatory compliance, um, business as usual outsourcing, supporting the in-house legal teams, and obviously on the uh, recruitment and secondees. Side. So what is the difference between, there's a number of different providers in this space, and they broadly fall into two categories. One, those ones which are associated with a law firm, um, so what we would describe as the captive ALSs, and others that are that are standalone. What's the difference for you, uh, for you guys, in um, working, if you're a client, with one that's a captive uh captive part of a law firm or one that's one that's independent i think one of the benefits you have um is that you do ultimately have the backing of the law firm uh in the delivery of any of those uh, aforementioned um services that stephen's talked about um with that what you then get is a retainment of knowledge um you get oversight of partners um and ultimately you get more flexibility in being able to uh, to, to price as well so there's a lot of benefits. Um, you know, a lot of law firms do and have started up uh, captive ALSs, so it's obviously a market that is exceptionally um, high in growth at the moment. Uh, and obviously, you know, kind of, as you said there, you know, our clients are very much looking to leverage the skills and the services services that we're bringing. And if you're a partner of, of a firm with a captive ALS, it's, it's another way of being able to support clients beyond just providing legal advice on a transaction or, or a case. Absolutely. Some of the large-scale engagements that uh, clients have requirements for, large-scale regulatory repapering, um, supporting in-house legal in terms of outsourcing some of the more uh, you know, banal day-to-day -day functions that need to be performed correctly, accurately, um, but are you know, are seen as low value in the firm. Uh, supporting clients with those kind of engagements is uh, is exactly what uh, what ALS provision is about for those yeah. clients uh, at, at the right pricing point. Yeah, and I think the diversification of services from a law firm is is really key there. And uh, as you said, clients are looking for it, um, whether it's because of restrained budgets, whether it's because of um, you know, needing to work around resources in their teams. Um, they want to work smarter. Um, and by providing that, that's what we're doing. So one of the things you do sometimes hear about from, from clients is that if you're going to use a captive ALS, is it just you're using sort of that law firm light or a sort of lower version of that law firm? What, what do you, how would you guys respond, respond to that? So I mean, in terms of, in terms of pricing, yeah. uh, clients' challenge is generally that pricing on a time and materials basis is risky on any engagement because you never know what's going to crop up. So having a fixed price uh, is very important. Um, having access to legal skills is massively important uh, because you need to be able to provide the full service to the client. You can manage the escalations if you have the support of the legal team and the partners that uh, we're lucky enough with Infield Fisher to have. So that is, that is what you're getting. The question of is it law firm light 
Uh, well, it's not because the delivery resources are not all um, trained lawyers. They are project managers, they are technicians, they are data scientists, uh, they're paralegals. And so it's a wide array of skills that are required that the law firm doesn't necessarily um, sell. So it's not law firm light, it's a completely different model. Um, but the value of the uh, ALS, uh, the kind of captive ALS over the standalone ALS, as James pointed out, is that we have the oversight of the partners um, and we have that guidance uh, to help us deliver quality results to our clients. So w one of the things we've been partnering with, with you guys on over the last few years is the flexible staffing. So where there's a, there's a project that kicks off or someone goes on maternity and, then, and a client needs a, a, needs a temporary resource. One of the things we hear a lot amongst clients is questions around whether if they are going to be able to take advantage of the flexibility of a resource, they'll need to compromise on the quality of that resource. How have you guys seen the quality of the uh, lawyers operating in the contract market uh, develop over the last last few years? Um, I think that's yeah an interesting point there. The Depends on the timing of when someone probably first went to market. Um, yeah, if you're talking about this model, fifteen, you know, even ten years ago, then yes, it was probably full of uh, ex partners who are in semi retirement, uh, just looking to make a you know, kind of little bit of extra money or keep their brains working. Um, the model has moved on so far since then, um, and that ever developing talent pool has allowed people to be able to leverage different parts of why they want to be a uh, interim interim lawyer whether it is the fact that they want to manage their time better whether it is that they want to diversify the work that they do um whether it is that they want to you know spend six months on six months off it, there's there's so many reasons why people want to do this now that i think you know kind of lumping everyone into the same category is is, is redundant I think the next piece as well is that that talent pool uh development is something that we have tapped into through the relationship with Con um, sorry, Con Condor and Montresor. Um, Condor obviously have their own network, but Montresor have such a wider, deeper network and with with you know, kind of candidates of real experts and quality. So, you know, kind of that ability to reach um, candidates is something that um, you know we've obviously developed over the last few years. But again, what we always come back to is that partner oversight and the law firm oversight that, that you get. Um, this isn't just a relationship with a, a secondi for six months. This is a relationship that you have with a law firm and a relationship that you have with a service that the law firm, firm provides that ultimately has quality built into it. Um, so I think you know if you are going to question quality, you, you can't question, therefore, the quality of the, the, the law firm. I think where, where I've seen it, I mean, there's, there's definitely a really deep bench in some areas. So you look at general commercial, you look at certain areas of finance, and there is a really deep vein of consultants that have decided to go down this path. I think the benefit of the tie-in that we've had is there are some niches that are just always very hard to find people in, whether you're doing it permanently or on a temporary basis. And having the ability to get the search teams that we have to go after some of those people means that we can provide you know, even challenging uh, practice areas or niches that are difficult to find um, in a in a in a speedy contract friendly contract friendly way. I would I would agree with that. I think just to reiterate one or two of the points, the the market has changed in terms of the resources and the candidates available, um, and the reason that it's changed is because there are more ALS providers and there are more folks looking for interim there is more demand effectively that greater demand has led to lawyers realizing that they don't need to continue going down the path of becoming a partner which maybe they're not well suited to or don't want to for whatever reasons um, and so it's allowed it's allowed the candidate pool to really grow exceptionally across a wide variety of areas if as condor we were to try and retain that pool and manage that entirely on our own there would be periods where resources would have absolutely nothing to do yeah. um, and so the partnership works well because we're able to tap into expertise that's gained through other engagements with other providers and other clients and we bring that to our clients as uh, secondments as well there's another um, issue that we <clears throat> sometimes hear in-house lawyers talk about when they're when they're talking about flexible resourcing in particular which is if you have a 
interim uh, resource. You have a, someone with your business for six months and you're having to spend time, energy, training them on how your organization does, does things. A lot of the time you then, that they're concerned that you then lose that when they end their six month placement. What would you say to a organization that, that was worried about that? Well, I think first, the, one of the things you have to cover is whether someone's there for a six month engagement or whether they're there for six years in a permanent role. You're always going to, when you lose a person, lose a sense of, sense of knowledge and a sense of um, MI. I think, again, coming back to uh, the same point, um, having the backing of the law firm enables. And, and being a client of the law firm as well enables you to understand the client in the past, in, in the present, and then in the future as well. So we're not there for that only that six months. We've been there for the last six years working with you, understanding your processes, understanding how you work, the different nuances. We're there in that six months where that person's on site and they you know, can get the benefit of learning that from you, but also learning that from us. And then we can take that forward in, into the future. Um, we understand how that person's worked for the last six months, so we can draw that in, you know, can feed that into the firm, but as well anyone else who comes in in the future, whether it's that same person or whether it's someone new, we've got that ability to be able to provide them with um, you know, kind of the base and the knowledge that we have. I think the other thing we've seen a little bit on that space is that now with the changes in the IR35 legislation, people don't have to leave after six months, you know, if, if there is a resource requirement that keeps going because there's no tax advantage for the uh, lawyer to be there. They don't have to pretend that they're an, <laughs> you know, a consultant that leaves after six months. They, they can be there for, you know, I think we've had people for 18, at least 18 months on, on assignments. Um, and I think that's probably likely to continue um, given, given post R35 changes and challenges around headcount in larger institutions. Yeah, I don't see IR35 reversing. I know there was was discussion. I don't see it reversing. I think it's a it's a positive change. Um, you know, it's it's a fairer playing ground playground for everyone. Um, but that does mean that there's longer term opportunities and it also gives clients more flexibility to say maybe I need this person for 2 3 years but I'm not certain that it's a, an ongoing relationship. They also able to change the delivery model. Um, quite flexibly, so it, it works on a number of fronts. And I, I don't see IR thirty five changing or going away. No, the other the other concern you do sometimes hear about um, flexible resourcing, in particular from uh, institutions that are linked to law firms, is it's extremely expensive. Um, what do you guys say to that? So you, you know, in terms of interim resourcing has been expensive, I think the costs are all seen as immediately above the line, whereas with uh, full-time employees, there are a significant number of costs that are, are hidden. Um, so you've got to make sure you're comparing like for like, um, taking into account the tax, pension, holidays, uh, the full kind of cost of having an additional seat uh, within a building. You look roughly at an uptick of about 1.6, 1.7 times um, the annual salary. And so if you look in at just that, just that pure metric, um, I think interim resources are probably a lot better value uh, than, than you would you know, look, than you would consider if you're looking at 100% of annual salary. Yeah. That said, you're also able to change your resource with, on a month's notice. Um, so if the resource isn't fit for purpose or if your business model has changed, you need someone else with a different skill set, you can then ob obtain those uh, skills and that knowledge quite easily and flexibly. So flexibility comes at a cost, but actually when you do the final analysis, it seems that it's relatively similar in terms of cost. Yeah, there's quite a wide range of cost points as well from <clears throat> this, the, the different providers in the market. A lot of the time providing sim like similar and often identical resources at quite wildly different price points. Yeah, and I think that comes to certain providers having spent obviously a long time in the market and maybe not adapting or moving uh, with the times um, and how people have changed and how other, sorry, people but how other businesses have changed their pricing structures. Um, I think you know, one of the things that we've always committed to is being flexible um, in that structure and also trying to be as in innovative as we can, um, understanding that there's no one size fits all. Um, and that we always want to make sure that we're, you know, kind of uh, l l looking at the right option. In terms of in terms of pricing, I think one of the key things to remember is that we have, as a law firm, captive 
ALS, we have an ongoing relationship with the client. We are the client's trusted advisor on a number of fronts, and the secondment isn't our only business line. Yeah. So we're not trying to make a super profit on the engagement. It's a, it's a, it's a way of helping us help our clients, yeah. partner with our clients, and so we're not gonna price it aggressively uh, to do so. And yeah. I think you'll see that difference uh, in the market with potentially the same candidates put forward by different types of ALS. Yeah. And if you're an, um, an organization that's not currently a Phil Fisher client, can you still partner with partner with Condor? Absolutely. So there's are, there are many ways of uh, signing up. We traditionally sign up with Phil Fisher, um, yeah. so it's Phil Fisher's clients. But we do have clients that are standalone Condor clients uh, and that are only looking for ALS provision. Um, and we take those clients on and service them accordingly. And you, you mentioned you work across all of the main practice groups. Are there, are there any industry sectors that you feel that you, the, the Condor offering is particularly well suited for or strong, strong within? I mean, financial markets is the uh, kind of birthplace of a lot of the ALS businesses because yeah. of the high volume of regulatory compliance work, um, the project work, the, typically the high volume of, of contracting. Yeah. Uh, commercial and corporate, um, obviously, again, high volumes of, of contracts, contracts that are in some cases, you know, lower to medium value for the organization as opposed to being strategic, um, which you know, you're you able to outsource the negotiation of. Um, large scale projects in the real estate space, um, also very super valuable. I think yeah, the key area that ALS has provided resources to is obviously DR, dispute resolution. Yeah. Uh, and providing paralegals for reviews yeah. um, and inquiry work. That's you know, one of the largest providers of um, or, or buyers of resource from ALS businesses uh, globally. So I think it's a, it's a wide mix, a wide array. W who haven't I called out? I think mm -hmm. employment, I think we, we obviously have some requirement on the employment side. Um, it depends on the practice and how transactional they are. Um, and then personal injury, medical negligence, not an area that we've done a whole barrel full of work in currently, um, but there are a number of products that are well suited to to that business unit as well, which we will be you know, rolling out in the next six months. Oh. And one thing that we're always looking to do um, as a division of the of the wider firm is work with the firm to understand how we can help them to deliver better um, and also work closer with their clients and build that partnership. Um, you know, the nature of the ALS businesses is that they are trying to drive innovation into the legal system and the legal world. Um, so in that vein, a lot of what we do is trying to uncover how we can do that, but taking the law firm's insight as well, taking the way that they work with the clients, the work that they're doing, the understanding that they have and the expertise that they're providing, um, and just looking at those nuances. Okay. So if an organisation wants to find out a bit more about how you guys can support them in any of the... Uh, legal issues or resourcing issues they've got, how should they get in touch? Pick up the phone, send us an email, contact us on LinkedIn, uh, log on to our website, condor-als.com. We would love to hear from you. Jets, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Tom.